I wanted to create a quick video talking through all of the elements of the invertible matrix theorem. So this theorem actually combines a lot of our previous uh, theorems all in one place. We've got a whole lot of statements that it turns out are equivalent to one another. And uh, I wanted to talk through some of the logic. I can't, um, I mean, proving all of these relationships uh, would take uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, but just kind of to follow through the logic here. Um, so let's start with A is an invertible matrix, so that, that first statement. Uh, now remember that you, you find the inverse of A by uh, setting up this matrix where you have A here and you have an identity matrix of the same size. I'm going to go uh, with a 3 by 3 just for um, talking through this theorem. But it, it could be any square matrix here. Uh, and then we row reduce, and uh, if you are able to turn the left side of that augmented matrix into the identity matrix, then the right side through those row operations becomes the inverse. Um, so if we're able to perform row operations and turn the left side here uh, into the identity matrix, then uh, the right side, like I said, gives us A inverse. So this is what happens when A is invertible. Uh, okay, so. All right, so then it makes sense that uh, B would follow from A. If A is invertible, then A must be row equivalent to the identity matrix, because that's, that's what happens. That's how you find the inverse, is you uh, row reduce the matrix A until you form the identity matrix here. So uh, just sort of by virtue of that method, we know that A implies B. And then C says uh, A has in pivot positions. So we end up with a pivot in every column and every row. And that would have to be true if we were able to row reduce to the identity matrix, then yes, we'd end up with a pivot in every column and every row, which would give us C. Uh, also, this would imply that uh, the equation AX equals zero, so the homogeneous equation has only the trivial solution uh, because Anytime you're able to uh, row reduce A to the identity matrix, so let's say we set up A here and we have uh, our column of zeros here, and then we do a lot of row operations. And uh, so we're operating under the assumption that A is invertible, so we're able to reduce this to the identity matrix. Well, all of those row operations are just going to leave these zero entries as zeros, because imagine you're your row operations, if you swap, or if you multiply 0 times 5, or if you do 5 times row 2 plus row 1, you're just combining zeros. So th this column is going to remain a column of zeros. Uh, so yeah, you, it would have to be, uh, you would have to have only the trivial solution then, if A reduces to the identity matrix. And so that gives us uh, D there. Uh, e the columns of A form a linearly independent set. Well, sure, because if you remember how you uh, determined if a collection of vectors is linearly independent, uh, we would set them up as the columns of a matrix. So let's imagine that's how we formed A. We uh, put these vectors in the columns of A, and then we row reduced. If you row reduce to, to this form, so that the, the uh, equation AX equals 0 has only the trivial solution, well, that was our definition of a linearly independent set. Uh, so it would meet that requirement. Now in 1.9, we looked at one-to-one -one linear transformations. And we said that a, a linear transformation is one-to-one -one if uh, there's exactly one uh, vector x that gets sent to uh, the vector b. So this equation ax equals b has a unique solution. That's when the transformation is uh, one to one. Okay, so imagine that we're trying to solve this, this system ax equals b. Uh, so we would set up the matrix a, I'm gonna use what I have here, and instead of the row of zeros here, now I have these entries of b. I, I row reduce, and we're, we're assuming here that A is invertible, so it's row equivalent to the identity matrix. And I'll have entries here. 
but but that would be a unique solution. That system is not going to have any free variables. There'll be exactly one solution, which would make uh, that transformation one to one. Uh, similarly, I'm going to jump to I here. Uh, in in one point nine, we said that. Uh, when you row reduce the matrix A, if A is the standard matrix for a, a linear transformation, if there is a pivot in every row, then the transformation is on to. And uh, well, if we if this thing's row equivalent to the identity matrix, then we have a pivot in every row. So uh, the transformation would be on to. Okay, now I, I jumped to I. Let me see which one did I skip? Okay, G. Uh, the equation ax equals b has exactly one solution. Well, actually, that's, yeah, f and g are, are directly tied together. So when I talked through uh, why exactly f would follow from a being invertible, um, we're also making an argument for g because those statements are, are very closely tied. Um, okay, the columns of a span are in. Uh, so... We've seen that, that the columns of a span are in if we end up with a pivot in every uh, column like we do here. So um, H is another one that is directly, F, G, and H are very closely tied because A spans are in, or the columns of A span are in, if uh, we can take any vector in Rn, so any n-dimensional vector, we'll call that B, and express B as a linear combination of the columns of A. So you would be setting up this exact equation again. If you were just take any vector in Rn and try to write it as a linear combination of the columns of A, that amounts to this same exact equation, which we said has a unique solution for any uh, B in Rn. Um, and so the columns of A do span Rn.